Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a very nice homemade equation. I'm not just calling it very nice because just because it's homemade, but it's a nice problem in my opinion. Now let me know what you think. So we have e to the power one minus x equals one minus ln x divided by x. That kind of looks complicated, right? But I'm sure some of you, maybe most of you, maybe all of you were able to guess and check a solution. But the thing is, we can't just guess and check all the time, even though it's helpful in some cases, we also need to make sure that there are no other solutions if that's the case. What if there are more solutions? How do we find them? So what is a more systematic way to do these kinds of problems? I mean, there's a reason why there's a problem like that and it's homemade, which I'll talk about in a little bit. I'm also gonna share something with you that anyways, we'll, we'll talk about it. I'm a little, um, you know, disappointed at myself, but anyways, things happen. So e to the power one minus x is equal to one minus ln x over x. So first of all, we're gonna multiply both sides by x to get rid of the fraction. All right, let's do that first. And at this point, feel free to guess and check some numbers but don't let everybody know, okay? So let's multiply both sides by x. That's gonna give us x times e to the power one minus x equals x minus ln x. Of course, we need to make sure x does not equal zero when we do that, but don't worry about it because x cannot be zero and x actually has to be positive. If we are talking about real solutions. What if we're not talking about real solutions than complex solutions? That's a complex issue. I'm gonna leave it to A plus BI. What is A plus BI? It's another channel that focuses on complex numbers. Numbers, go ahead and check it out, okay? So, we, our equation looks a little more friendly without the fraction, right, don't you think? But we're gonna make it even better. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and do e to the power both sides. So I'm gonna prepare my e's. Okay, and then bring the powers, x e to the one minus x, x minus ln x. And you're like, why do you do this? There should be a good reason behind it, right? And yes, there is. Because if I do e to the power ln x, that's equal to x. That's gonna give me something nice. So the right-hand side is really promising, or I can safely say that most of the time this is true. Anytime you see x minus ln x or x plus ln x or ln x minus x and there's an e involved in, in the equation somewhere, do e to the power of both sides because of this fact. Make sense? Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and do the following. First of all here, the exponents can be separated. So we can write this as x times e to the power one divided by e to the power x equals e to the power x divided by e to the power ln x. Because properties of exponents tells us this, right? Whenever you have something like e to the power a divided by e to the power b, it's e to the power a minus b. But don't forget, this is a two-sided equation. I mean, equations are two-sided anyways. It works both ways, right? Otherwise, it will be implies. So, we can go ahead and reverse the process basically here. This looks complicated, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And there was an easier way to do it, but I forgot. Sorry about that. If you can come up with it, I'm pretty sure somebody will come up with that. Let us know in the comment section down below. So, here's my next thing in a more complicated manner. First of all, I'm gonna know, uh, I'm gonna replace this with x, which is nice. So we get e to the power x e divided by e to the x equals e to the x divided by x. Here's the critical part. Take a look at this and that. You get it? They are reciprocals, and it's just awesome. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Nice. What am I talking about? I'm talking like I'm talking about a little bit of hocus pocus here, or mathematics, or abracadabra, whatever you want to call it. So here's how it works. We're gonna 
bring this over to the left, okay? By multiplying both sides by x over e to the x. Let's do that, x over e to the x. These are gonna cancel out, leaving us with one, nice. But on the left-hand side, we have the following. x over e to the x times e to the ex over e to the x. Oops. I gotta be very careful because ex can look easily right e to the power x if I'm not careful. Make sense? Okay. So what is, why is this significant? We have one on the right-hand side, by the way, because it, I multiply by the reciprocal. This is significant. You know why? Because take a look at this one more time. This is e x over e to the x. This is x over e to the x. So if I multiply both sides by e, let me do that. Multiply by e and multiply by e and then circle this again. Notice that this is e x over e to the x because I can bring the e over here, right? And let's erase that out as well. And this is the same. So what does that tell you? Lambert's W function. Ta-da! That super, super special product log. So what is Lambert's W function? You make a big W, put the T e to the T as your input, and your output will be T. It's as simple as that. Just know this, and hopefully you can solve some problems, maybe a lot of problems. So if I apply Lambert's W function to this, so in this case, my T is this, which is the bubble, and this is T as well. So when I apply it, I'm gonna get T, which is E X over E to the X equals, on the right hand side, I need to apply it to one E, but how do you apply it to one E or just E? Well, I'm gonna write it as one times E to the power one, because E is E to the first power, and ta-da, this is where the magics or mathematics comes in because this is just gonna be one. Again, from this very definition of Lambert's W function. So here's what we got, E x over E to the x equals one, or you can call this E to the x equals E x. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this equation and keep looking very hard, look very hard until you find the solution. And I'm pretty sure you did, right? X equals one. But why, how did I know that? Well, E equals E, come on, you knew that, right? And you can also divide both sides by E and look at it a little differently. And again, E to the power zero is one, so X equals one is going to work, right? Either way, I like this method and I believe I made a video about this a while ago. I'm not sure if I can find it, but if you do, let us know. So, we got the solution, but is that the only solution? All right, if you graph these two functions, here's what you're gonna realize. e to the x is exponential, so it's gonna look like this, somewhat. And e x is a line, this is y equals e to the x. e x is a line that goes through the origin and it touches, I couldn't make it touch, but you could probably use the feature of, uh, what is it called? Notability, uh, because I think notability can give me a straight line, right? Yeah, it's not as close, but you get the idea. Suppose these are tangent, and this is the graph of y equals e x. Kind of like y equals x with the slope of e. Ooh, did I say slope? Yes. Do you know why these graphs are tangent? Because their derivatives are equal at x equals one. And their y values are also equal. That's why they are tangent, which means there's only one solution. You can also graph y equals e to the power one minus x and y equals one minus ln x over x, and you should also realize that they intersect at one point. Go ahead and check it out and let us know. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. By the way, this is the second video for today, so go ahead and make sure you watch both videos. The other one was about an exponential equation, which I think is nice. Both of these equations are, I think, homemade. Anyways, see you next time. Bye-bye.